woman of God, name, and confess to that man of God or woman of God, bless his name, and ask that anointed man of God to pray for me, bless his name, that the hands of God would not be against me because of my sin. Bless his name. What a privilege we have in the church. Bless God. Because if I sin, bless God, the wrath of God would be on me and an untimely happening can happen to me if I carry that sin about with me every day. Bless God. An untimely event can happen to me. It's called a visitation. Can happen to me. I could be traveling on the road. And something happened to me. And they said, uh-uh, look what happened to Brother Patrick. I wonder why that happened. Bless God. When there is no need for any event to come upon me, when I can go to a man of God, a woman of God, and say to that woman of God, you know, I did something I shouldn't have done today. Bless his name. I did something outside of scripture. Can you pray for me? What does the scripture say will happen to that person? The prayer of faith will heal that person. And if that person has committed sin, they will be forgiven. Bless his name. So there is no need for me to carry my transgression, to cover my transgression. Bless his name. Because God has ordained ministers and elders, mothers and fathers in the church, bless his name, to intercede that if I, if I have gone out of the way, bless God, they can pray for me. The Bible says if I cover my transgression, I will not prosper. That's why Paul said that some men's sins go before them, bless God, but some men's sins are carried with them into judgment. Bless God. I have the chance now to make my peace with God and to be reconciled to God by the provision that he has made rather than to carry my transgression and have a fearful onlooking. But we give God thanks, grateful to God for this platform grateful to God for the women of God, the men of God, the elders and the teachers and the pro those that have given the gift of prophecy in our midst to assist and help us as we journey on to eternity. So we're going to be reading the scripture after our mother Chitoli prays for us. We are privileged. We may not feel privileged, but we are very, very privileged and God has been good to us in so many ways because if those brethren were not praying for us, look what could have happened. Bless God. Some of us have received healing. Some of us have received deliverance. Various acts of God's mercy has been shown to us. Bless his name because of people praying for us every day. Bless the Lord. And I give God thanks for this privilege. So at this time, I'd like to ask our mother Chitoli to pray for us before we read our scripture in Jesus' name. Praise God. God bless you all, Adrian. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Oh, kind, loving Father God, we do humbly approach your mercy seat in the name of your precious son, Jesus. Father, we want to give you thanks and praise, oh God, for your loving kindness and for your tender mercies towards us. We thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. We thank you that another Tuesday, oh God, you have gathered us together, that we Oh God, might call upon your name. We give you praise. We honor you. We glorify you. Thou art God and 
beside you, there is none other. Lord, we thank you for sparing our lives. We thank you for keeping us, Lord, even throughout this day. Some, oh God, have come away from the activities of the day, Lord, to sit in your presence, oh God, and even, Lord, to hear a word from you. We pray, dear God, that you would incline our ear, oh God, to hear from you, oh God, what the Spirit is saying unto us this time. We give you thanks, dear God, even for the moderator, oh God, who has led us thus far. We pray for your continued, oh God, strength for him, oh God. We pray, dear God, that you would anoint him afresh, oh God. We pray that you would uphold him, that you may even, oh God, guide him this evening. Whatsoever, Lord, we would do this evening, we just want to commit it in your hands. We are so grateful and thankful to be in the land of the living. Lord, there are many today, oh God, who in a moment, oh God, has been, oh God, the Lord, they have been out of this world as it were, oh God. Lord God, we hear of many things around the world that is happening. Lord, the killings, oh God, in America. Lord, those in Ukraine, all around us, oh God. But you said, be not dismayed, whatever the tide because God will take care of us. You tell us, Lord, that we should cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. And we are so grateful, oh God, that we could come to you in our times of distress. We can cry, blessed be God. We can cry, Abba, Father. And your ear is open to hear our cry. This evening, Lord, we just want to commit this service in your hand that you would have your own sweet way. We do not want to do anything of self, oh God. Self, indeed, is a failure. But we know, dear God, that when your presence is here with us, when you lead us, when you guide us, oh God, we know, indeed, we would have the victory. There is no failure in you. And God, we want to thank you that you are strong and mighty to save. You are strong and mighty to deliver. You are strong and mighty, oh God, to do for us more than we could ever ask or think. And so God, I want to say thank you for how far you have brought us. And as we would go into your word, oh God, Lord, for a little season, Lord, I pray that you'd bless and anoint these words to our spirit. And Lord, I pray the rest of the service, the prayer meeting, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will take full control as we commit it in your hands and tell you thanks in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the blessed Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. Amen. Give God thanks for leading us thus far and give God thanks for the brethren that are praying along with those that are praying. Bless his name. We weep with those that weep. We mourn with those that mourn. Bless his name. And we bear witness with those that speak by the Spirit. Bless his name. We should be able to bear witness with the prayer. Bless his name that that person is praying in the spirit bless his name we should be able to say amen straight away bless god because we know that the things that are said bless god we are we are in full agreement with them bless his name because we are also hearing by the self same spirit so there's only two verses that i'd like to read one from luke 21 and the reason why i'm going there it's just that we can have an understanding as Jeremiah gave Israel an understanding of the times and the seasons that was upon them. Bless his name. Paul said we should know. We should know the times and the seasons. Bless his name. So we're going to be hearing from 
the words of Jesus, these should be highlighted in red in Luke 21, verse 24. And in Romans 11, 25, that is the Apostle Paul prophesying about the dispensation that we are now in, which is soon going to be coming to an end. Bless the Lord. So Luke 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Romans 11 verse 25. And this is the Apostle Paul speaking to the Roman brethren. Bless his name. For I would not brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Bless his name. So we give God thanks that the time and the season that we are in now the bible call it the dispensation of grace bless his name but the dispensation of grace will be coming to an end bless god and we are privileged to be in that dispensation bless the lord this is a time that the bible says if you hear his voice harden not your heart as they did in the time of provocation. If you hear the voice of God, you are privileged because there is coming a time when the Gentiles will not be able to call upon the name of the Lord. There is coming a time when the windows of heaven will be closed and the earth will become, uh, I believe the heavens will become iron. Bless his name means no access, no access to call upon the Lord. Bless his name. Call upon the Lord while he is near. Let the unrighteous man forsake his way and his thoughts and call upon the Lord. Bless his, bless his name. While, we, while the Lord is near. Bless his name. We give God thanks that we still have the privilege to call upon the Lord because access will be closed. Jesus is now seated at the right hand of God, making intercession for us that as we pray, Jesus also prays with us. Or we pray with him as he intercedes to his father on our behalf. But that dispensation will cease because God will say to his son, bless his name, who is seated at his right hand, he will tell him to stand up and go down and take charge of this wicked earth. You think God is going to sit? You're watching the news? You think God is going to sit in heaven and put up with this much longer? Bless the Lord. God is not going to put up with the wickedness of man just like it was as I come to a close just like it was in the days of Noah he looked down on the earth and what did he see he saw corruption do we see corruption brethren do we see dishonesty brethren do we see fraud and deceit and lies around us Bless his name. God looked down and saw corruption. He saw violence. Do we see violence? Bless his name. Violence to outrage us. Bless the Lord. And he saw evil imagination. And when God looked down on the earth, 
the Bible says it grieved him at his heart. It grieved God at his heart and it had repented him that he had created man. Bless his name. Man can grieve God. How does man grieve God? By transgression. Bless his name. God is going to put a stop to man's iniquity because his son is coming back. But we give God thanks that we are calling upon the Lord while he is near because our opportunity to call upon the Lord will come to an end and men will no longer have the opportunity to call upon the Lord. The Bible says, kiss the son, bless his name, while you can kiss him. Bless God, because the time the kissing will cease, he will come back to the earth, not as a lamb, bless the Lord, but he will come back to the earth as a lion to execute judgment on the Gentile nation and to give back the kingdom to his people in Jerusalem. Bless his name. Under Jeremiah, Zedekiah was the final king. Bless God. And after Zedekiah, we don't see no more king. Bless God. Does Israel have a king now? Bless his name. Israel has no king now. But the next king that is coming on behalf of Israel is Jesus. And he will give them back the kingdom. Bless his name. And we are waiting for that time to come. Bless the Lord. So we give God thanks for this privilege that we are still able to call upon the Lord while he is near. Bless his name. So as we continue in prayer, bless God, just to remind us of the privilege and the time that we have, we can call upon him now. Access to the heavens is still open. Bless God. But access to the heavens will be closed at a certain point when God sees fit. And we, want, we don't want to be too late to be calling upon the name of the Lord. So, Sister Dolores, I ask that you pray for the church, that we would be conscious of the signs of the times, that we would not be walking as blind, we would not be drunk, we would not be asleep, we would not be scoffers, bless his name, but we would be conscious that time is winding up and we don't want to find ourselves locked out of the kingdom because we made slight of the grace that is made available to us now. Bless his name, Sister Dolores, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. This evening, we come before you one more time to give you thanks, dear God, to praise your name because you're all together lovely. And we give you thanks to know that you're a God that don't change. And we bless your name because the heaven declare your glory and the firmament shirt your handiworks. And this evening, Lord, we just want to give a thanks. We want to acknowledge who you are because there's no God like you. You're God by yourself. You're the God who still cares because you fall rain upon the just and upon the unjust. And we hollow your name. Having obtained help from you, God, we continue until now. It is no good that we have done, but it's through your tender mercies, your grace that has sustained us until now. It's not we that live, but it's you that liveth in us. We praise you, we adore you. We hallow your name. Oh, give thanks unto you because you is good, your mercy. Endure it forever. It's not for a day, but forever. I pray, oh God, this evening that you continue to give us strength to go on next mile. 
because it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your divine spirit. And as we gather again, Lord, in this way, as we gather, Lord, it's for more strength, it's to know more about you. And so God, we pray, oh God, that you will breathe upon us one more time, breath of God, and fill us with life anew. We need your touch day by day, Lord, because without you, Lord, we cannot walk alone. We continuously need your guidance. We need your protection, oh God, to lead us in these last days. Give us strength, oh God. The songwriter said the church is one foundation. Yes, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Help us, oh God, to have our mind focus upon you because the adversary is like a roaring lion and it's seeking whom he may devour. But help us, oh God, to walk in the spirit that we will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. Oh God, the spirit, oh God, and the flesh, they are contrary to each other. So help us to walk in the spirit, dear God. Help us, oh God, to keep our home on, to wear it night and day, because ambush lies the evil one. God, we are depending on you, that you help us, oh God, your people, that we will have our home Oh God, to be fully clothed. Oh God, to have, oh God, our helmet to protect us, my God, and the breastplate of righteousness. And we have on our proper clothing on our feet, my God. And our loins will be strong, gird about with truth. And in our hand, Lord, we have our sword at all times in our right hand, which is the spirit of truth. In our left hand, dear God, is shield of faith. Because sometimes we meet upon some condition, some situation, dear God. But when we have the shield of faith, Lord, we know we can do all things through you because you strengthen it, us, my God. Help us not to look to the left nor the right, but to have our focus upon you. When we are fully clothed, Lord, we are not scared of the adversary because we know that thou art with us. We know that you will be with us even unto the end. If, if we live righteous, dear God, if, if as long as we are in our right place, the songwriter said, when he comes again, oh, may he find me faithful to him, doing my best standing the test. That's how, oh God, we want you to find us in our right place like the five wise virgin, dear God. There were 10 and they were in the right place, Lord. But they had a five wasn't ready. But they had a five that were ready, God. They hauled up the 10, do hear the cry. But the five wise, my God, help your people. Help us, dear God, to be like the five wise virgin, ready to meet you. Oh God, have enough, oh God, all in our vessel in our lamp, my God, because the journey is great. Help us, dear God, to stand in the test, to keep praying without ceasing, to live righteous, to live clean, because without holiness, no man shall see you. So help us to live holy. That's why when you read in the scripture, behold, what man of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know when you shall appear, we shall be like you, because we shall see you as you is. And the Bible is going to say, if any man have this hope within him, purify it at himself as you, God, is pure. So help us to live ready. Help us to live clean, my God. Help us to live the life, my God, that we're light. Our life will be a light shining through the darkest night. Oh God, we the people of God, help us live the life because we are this, we hide the light that sit on a hill, we cannot be hidden. That's why, oh God, the darkness could not comprehend the light. 
So help us to live that way, oh God. Guide us and protect us from all evil. Hide us, oh God, continuously under your blood where the adversary cannot do us no harm. He doesn't like it, dear God, when we stand for you. i read in the scripture, or the adversary has hate you from the beginning. So we that are falling after you, God, he hate us too. But we give a thanks for the prayer that you have prayed. Oh God, as we read in St. John 17, that you pray for us, that we will be protected from the evil that is in this world. Thank you, oh God, for prayer. Because prayer go a long way. The Bible said the fervent effectual prayer for righteous man, it availed much. That's why we are still here. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. We can say hitherto had the Lord has done. You are our light when shadows fall. You are the wheel in the middle of the wheel. You are the lily of the valley and you are the bright and morning star. You are the fearest of 10,000 to our soul. Oh God, we give you thanks, my God. Oh God, 10,000 may fall at our right hand but they shall not come nigh, nigh us. Only with our eyes, we shall behold the wicked because you cover us. You cover us, dear God, in your secret place where the adversary cannot do us no harm. I put all the bridging again before your God. You know them by name. You know them by nature, Lord. You, God, is not tired of hearing our hearts cry. Because you said in your word that we should call unto you. You promise to answer and to show great and mighty things which we know not of. We know for sure, Lord, that we are calling unto the true and living God. The God that don't sleep, that don't slumber. The God that is alive and well. I pray, oh God, that you continue to cover, oh God, all the elders of the church. My God, I pray that you strengthen them continuously. Oh God, I pray that you continue to seal them with your divine righteousness. Oh God, the adversary don't like them. But we know that, oh God, you are the greater I am. Oh God, you promise, oh God, to keep us wherever we go in. And God, your goodness and mercy will always follow on their trap. With such a shepherd, nothing will they lock. I pray, oh God, that you continue to breathe your divine fresh breath upon them and continue, oh God, to fill them with life anew with your divine spirit. God, I'm depending on you. You, God, has kept them over these years. They can say through many dangers, toil, and snares, they have already come. The grace that brought them safe thus far, the same grace will lead them home. Thank you, dear God, for keeping them hunting now. Oh God, thank you, oh God, for the strength that you have given them because they are the engine of the church. So help us, oh God, to continue to pray for them. Oh God, continue to pray for them, my God, that you continue to bless them. Oh God, that you prosper them in all their ways. God, I'm depending on you. Anoint them, oh God, with your fresh anointing. Oh God, I put them before you again. Lord, I pray for strength. Oh God, I pray, oh God, that you continue to uphold them with your divine righteousness. In Jesus' name. In no other name, but in the name that is above every other name, I place them before you, O oh God. Lord, I put them before you. O oh God, the oversight minister, the assistant pastor Byfield, O oh, oh God, has been afflicted. But God, it is well with his soul. O oh God, I put, O oh God, Helen Grant, my God, before you, Helen Thompson. I call them by name. Oh God, you're not tired of hearing their name call, Lord. So I put them before you because the adversary is like a roaring lion and anyone, oh God, he can devour 
that what he will do. So, oh God, as I pray tonight, Lord, I put them before you. Oh God, I put, oh God, he can, can seek before you again. Lord, as he make himself available, cover them, protect them, hide them in no other name, but in your powerful name, because all power is given to you in heaven and in earth. God, I put, oh God, Sister Charming, wherever she is, Oh God, that you strengthen her as she go. Oh God, to minister to her mom. I pray, oh God, that you remember her. I remember her mother in your name. God, I put Deacon Wallace before you. Jesus, I put Deacon Walker. Oh God, I put Mother Dolly. Oh God, that always been called to pray. And she always in her place, Lord, occasionally, if something may happen, but she always, most of the time, Lord Jesus, she's there. I pray, oh God, that you remember her. Strengthen her, dear God. My God, touch her heart, touch her mind, touch her body. Quicken her spirit one more time. In your name, I pray thee. Lord, I put Mother Edwards before you, Jesus. We haven't seen her coming out as how she ought to. But I pray, oh God, that you strengthen her spirit, touch her body, oh God. You know, oh Lord, how to do it. In your name, I pray thee. Thank you again, Lord, for the palm that minister time. The adversary don't like that. But I pray, oh God, that you build a hedge around her. Oh God, she was in limping the other week, Lord. But thank you. On Sunday, I see she could walk properly. Thank you for her. Touch her and strengthen her, dear God. I pray, dear. I pray for Mother Miriam. Wherever she is, my God, whisper sweet peace to her soul. Oh God, let you know that at all times you are with her. Because you promise in your word that you will not leave us comfortless. Oh God, you have prayed to your father before you leave her. And you said, I will send another com I'm going to pray to my father that he will send another comforter. Which is the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is here with us. And sometimes we are on our own, but we hear a word whisper to our soul. Because the Holy Ghost is there. Continue to bless us, Miriam, dear God, and strengthen her. In Jesus' name, I pray to you. Remember, Holy Virgin, dear God, we are not a lot in number, but one thing we know for sure, we have you in our midst, and that make a great difference. That's why, Lord, we are few, but thank you, O oh God, for the mind that you have given us, Lord, that we want to go into your house. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Lord, I pray for Sister Sandra. My God, that you touch your daughter. Oh God, that you strengthen her. My God, I am depending on you. You have brought her from a long way, Lord. And she has the mind to worship you. She happy, she loves to be in your house. The adversary don't like that. So I pray, oh God, that you will guide her. You will hide her. There's a secret place in your pavilion. I pray that you will continue to hide her. Hide us, dear God, that is a special place for your people. The secret place of your pavilion. And I just wanna give a thanks to her, dear God that you continue to uphold her, that you strengthen her. Oh God, in Jesus' name I pray. I put our dear Pastor Shirley, dear God. Oh God, wherever she is, I pray, oh God, that you strengthen her. My God, I pray that you will anoint her. I pray that you cover her from the wicked plans of the adversary. The adversary, he don't have anything good because there's nothing good in him. 
oh God. So I pray that you will hide your daughter, my God, the past of, oh God. Jesus, I pray that you will give her strength, give her a new revelation. My God, I'm depending on you. It is not easy at times, but help her to know that through it all, she learned to trust in you. And through it all, she learned to depend upon your divine word. Oh God, thank you for your mercy upon her life. Continue to sustain her, dear God. Continue to bless her. Continue to strengthen, strengthen her. Her going out and her coming in, Lord. You have your angel. Her, the angel that you have sent for her will continue to watch it over her. Bless us in a mark way, dear God. Strengthen each and every one of us, dear God. God, I'm depending on you. Lord, I put Sister Dutchin before you tonight that you will touch her, my God, that you, you will strengthen her. Coming from a long way to Lord, have the mind to continue with you. I pray, oh God, that you bless her. I pray, oh God, that you make way. I pray, God, that you provide because the what our great provider, you are our great protector. My God, everything is in you. Everything is in you. Oh God, your times, Lord, we need to ask of you, tell you, and you're dear, oh God, and you know what best for us. So help us, oh God, to lay it all on the altar. The song was to say, he's your all on the altar of sacrifice slain. You can only be blessed and of peace and sweet rest when we yielded our body and soul. I pray for Sister that Lord, that you continue to strengthen her, that you continue to bless her. Bless each and every one of us, dear God. The have sent virgin, my God, that we don't see, you know, Lord. Oh God, I send on prayer for them right now, wherever they are, Lord. I pray that you make a visitation upon their heart. Sometime, Lord, we look at the outward, but you deal with the heart. So I pray right now, oh God, that you make a visitation, that you strengthen where strength needed, dear God. Comfort where comforting needed. Sometimes, Lord, there's a spirit of discouragement, my God, that sometimes rests upon your people. So I pray, oh God, for comforting in Jesus' name, uplifting in no other name but in the name that is above every other name, the name that no other name can comprehend with. So that's the name I'm talking about. The name that when we say Jesus, it makes a difference. The songwriter said, Jesus, oh, how sweet the name. Jesus, every day the same. Jesus, let all saints proclaim. His word he prays forever. The name that is so sweet. When you call your name, it makes a difference. When you call your name, Lord, it, it don't sound stale. Because sometimes when we keep repeating the same word, the same word, but your name makes a, it may, it's a difference because it counteracts. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Your name is able to fit it, match it. We thank you for that name. So I pray one more time, my God, that as you listen to her prayer, Lord, you have a set time when you will answer. For all the requests, Lord, that we have asked of you, you have a set time. All we have to do, continue to ring on and on because you're dear to answer prayer. God, I put everyone again, everyone again in, in your name, Lord. I pray for all the brethren children that scatter. My God, you know where they are. The seed already planted in him, in them. But God, you have a certain time, you have a set time, Lord, when you will do a shaking like the dry bones in the valley. My God, I'm depending on you. I pray for them, Lord. I pray for them, all the children, all the brethren children, my children, 
I put them before you. You know all the names. You know all of the you, you know all the names, them Lord. Because every hair that is on our head, Lord, you number it. So God, I'm not gonna try to call the names them, but I put them before you. I put them all before you, Lord, wherever they are. My God, my God, have mercy. Have mercy upon them. Have mercy. Have mercy, God. Have mercy upon them. My God, wherever they are, Lord, I pray for protection. My God, have mercy. Because we know that mercy there was great and grace was free. And their pardon there will multiply. And they were burdened, soul find liberty at Calvary. So I'm crying for mercy upon the virgin children. Upon the virgin children, dear God, we believe by faith, my God, we believe by faith, because we know that faith is a substance of things so far, the evidence of things not seen. By faith, the elders obtain a good report. So God, we leave things in your hand. All we have to do, call unto you, and you have a set time to answer. Brother Job said, all of my appointed time, I'm gonna wait until my change come. We're gonna wait for changes, dear God, because we know you give, we know you take it away. But we're gonna still say, blessed be the name of the Lord. We trust you by faith. We believe you by faith. We stand in agreement by faith. And we know, oh God, that you are able to do what our mind is not capable to even to heart to think, much less to heart stuff. You are able to do it. So we place things in your hand, in your care, and we're waiting because the answer is on the way. Thank you for your mercy that still endured forever. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for protection, many. Bless us tonight, dear God. This mercy do I ask in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and we give God thanks for the privilege that we can use the name of Jesus, bless his name, to make our requests known unto the Father. Brother Pat? Your mic's not Pat. Your mic's not working, Papa. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Is it on now? Yes. Yes. His name. I was just saying that we give God thanks for the privilege of Jesus' name, that through that name, we can make requests to the Father, and we know that in the name of Jesus, bless his name, Jesus promised us that if we ask his Father anything in his name, he will do it, bless his name, and we give God thanks that our God is a God of compassion, a God of forgiveness, a God of mercy, a God of long suffering, a God of patience. Bless his name. And it's in my heart just to ask our elder Grant if he can pray for those that are out of the way, those that are halting in between two opinions, those that are weak in their faith, Bless his name, those that may be discouraged. Glory to God, those that the devil may be talking to and trying to convince them to go back to Egypt. Bless his name. And we give God thanks that, as I said earlier, the prophets were given by God to intercede for the children of God, and we, in like manner, we consult the elders and the ministers to pray. Bless his name. It's in the heart of man to destroy the weak. Just choose the strong. Choose those that are great in strength. 
and leave the weak. But the church is not like that. Bless his name. The Bible says we that are strong have to bear the infirmities of the weak. Bless his name. And we should comfort those that may be discouraged by the adversary. We know that the devil is working. Paul said we are not ignorant of his wiles. And his plan is to destroy the children of God. But we give God thanks for the weapon of prayer that we can pray against his wiles. Bless God so that he would not destroy those vulnerable believers that are in our midst. We want to see them become strong. Bless God. We don't want to see them discouraged and then be out of the way. So I'll be asking our elder Grant to pray for those weak elements, bless God, that may be vulnerable to the adversary in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for this another day. Thank you for this another hour. We thank you for this another minute. And we thank you for another moment that we can come to your throne and cry, Abba Father. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit. And firstly, we acknowledge you for who you are. And we want to thank you tonight for your grace. Your grace is the one that brings salvation. And your grace is the one that teaches us that we should deny all ungodliness and word loss and we should live soberly and godly in this present world. And we want to commend the feeble knees and the hands that hang down and those who are weak into your hand because you're able to keep that which we commit unto you against that day. Those of us who are battered on every side and going through mass perplexities, and though we may not say nothing, we are witness that you are able to keep that which we commit unto you against that day. And we pray this evening for your grace. In the time when Noah was on the earth, Lord, he found grace and your grace was there to be found. And we pray again for your grace this evening. Because your grace brings salvation. Help us not to go ahead of you in nothing we do. But we acknowledge you and pray that you'll direct our path. Lord, we can speak to someone. We can encourage someone. But without your grace, our labor is in vain. The word tells us that the sower sowed and some fell by the wayside and some fell among thorns, some fell among stony places and some fell among good ground. And at least out of every four seeds sown, only one is sown onto good ground. As we sit down and watch the adversary, he's very cunning and we are ignorant of his wiles that straight where he comes and taketh away that which is sown in the heart, lest it should die and germinate and bring forth fruit. So his wiles is to destroy the seed before it can take root. But we remember tonight that your word tell us for your son, that when he, the spirit truth is come, that he will convince the world of sin of judgment and of righteousness. And Lord, sometimes we try to push your spirit to one side and do it by our might and do it by our power. But as we're little fellowship and as a little few as we be, we commend everybody to your grace. And we ask, Lord, that as you remember, you told Paul when he had his situation that there are certain things you won't move but your grace is sufficient to keep. Therefore, we pray that you'll cover us this evening with your grace. And as we join in prayer, 
in this moment, in this evening, we pray for every home. In a home, there might just be one that has found grace. But I pray like in the days of Noah, that Noah, oh God, the grace that he found extended from him self to his family. We realize there's not many people that will give themselves over as in the days of Noah. But as we look carefully, the eight souls that were saved was not from his family next door, but for his family. As we look at those that went into Ark, his wife, oh God, being one with him, was not just one with him as man and wife, but they were helpers of one another's faith. And if the relationship between the man and his wife is broken down, then the three sons would not come on board. But because of the relationship between Noah and his wife, they locked themselves as one and their three sons, oh God, were able to look at both mother and father standing together in the grace of God. They decided that they would also stand. And the same relationship that they saw between the mother and father that encouraged them to stand. Lord, even their wives beheld this relationship and when we looked at the end of the day, out of the multitude of men on the face of the earth, it's only one man and his family, according to the human race that went into the ark. Therefore, we pray tonight, especially for our families. The devil desired to sieve our families like wheat. But as we gather in prayer, we pray for our families. Some of us, as we got married, Lord, it was just two of us. Just a man before he got married or the wife before she got married. And the two said he became one flesh. And some have one, two, three, four children. And even ourselves, we did that which was right before you to bring up our children in the fear and the admonition of you. And Lord, along the way in life, we find that the adversary decides that he wants to unstable lies, oh God, the family, because in unstabling lives in the family, the man and his wife, and the man and his wife and his children, he can unstable life, the man and his wife and his children, and his children's children. But as we come before you tonight, words will fail us, but we want to acknowledge this, that you gave the command that men should be fruitful and to multiply. And multiplication is not just in numbers. Lord, even Eve said when she got a son from it, I've gotten a man child from the Lord. And we thank you for your goodness towards us. As we trace back the years, we can look at ourselves individually, each member of this fellowship, whether married or married. And some of our children, Lord, that we've had, we brought them up. They were born in church. They grew up in church. But somewhere along the lines in this fellowship, the adversary, like the fox that gnawed the void, has exercised a cunning device that our children either have no time for, not even ourselves, but more so our time for you. You blessed us and you've given us children ability. And yet the adversary in all what we do, I find a cunning way to turn our children, not from us necessarily, but their commitment towards you is not as it was when they were much smaller. And we put on the altar tonight, the family, and we pray for each family 
the Chicholis, McKinsey's, the Grants, the Edwards, the Byfields. And time will fail us tonight to call them the names, but we're asking you tonight that you will bless us again, that our families will find grace. As much as Noah found grace, the grace was not just for him alone, but it was for him and his wife. And that grace was for him and their children. And that grace spread down to their daughter-in-laws. And I thank you tonight that when you destroy the earth, you would not leave yourself without a witness. And when you would replenish the earth again, you did it by the family of Noah, who you preserved through the storms of life and the rain that ascended and descended. It's not by our might. We don't come to prayer meeting to multiply words and to show that we can pray and to show how we can pray. But we ask you tonight in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, remember our families. Lord, as we are about to close, you called Abraham and you said in blessing, I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply thee. And Lord, it was necessary that you appeared to Isaac, even though you appeared to Abraham. Abraham's revelation and relationship with you is not sufficient. It is necessary for you to appear to Isaac. And as much as you appeared to Abraham, and then you appeared to Isaac, their appearance, that your appearance to them was not enough. It was necessary for you to appear to Jacob. And Father, we ask you tonight that as you've appeared unto us, as you did to Noah, Abraham, and time will fail us to tell of those you appear to, we're asking you to visit the Gentiles. And we're talking about the Gentiles of our loins, the Gentiles of our children. And as in the days of Noah, only the family was being saved in the ark. Therefore, we close our prayer meeting tonight and asking you, we're not praying outside of the family, but in line to your word. And if it be a witness to the spirit of truth in your word, we pray that you'll visit, visit every member of our family, our children, our children's children, especially. Because Lord, our going to church and reading and preaching does not save them, does not bring them to the reality of you. What's needed is for you to visit them. And therefore we ask you for a visitation tonight. Hear our cry and visit each of our children and visit our children. We, some of us have grandchildren and we ask you tonight that you'll visit every member, relatives, aunties, uncles of our family. Let your grace be mixed into our family. And this we ask of you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray that as you pour out your grace to save until you deliver, we know that that same grace is sufficient to keep against the wars of the adversary. This we ask and we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. We give God thanks for intercessions the supplications and the requests that have been made this evening. This is now we cannot finish, we have to stop because time is our enemy. But we give God thanks that God hears the prayer of a righteous man and the Bible says that it availeth much. So as I hand back to our sister Sandra, bless his name, I give God thanks for you all and I I will be praying for you all and your families, just as you pray for me and for my family in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brethren. Praise the Lord, brethren. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, brethren. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
God bless you, brethren. Thank you so much for joining us in this prayer meeting today. Thank you, Brother Patrick, for your leading. Sister Dolores, for the church prayer, and Brother Dolly, opening prayer. Brother Earl, for the weak and the weary and the families. God bless you. Sister God bless you. you. God bless you, brethren. Greetings in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you. Um, uh, on Thursday night will be our Bible study at eight o'clock on Zoom. Um, also on, on Sunday, uh, I just want to remind us that the 17th, the topic of our lesson is evidence of Christ's resurrection. And the scripture reading is taken from John chapter 20, verse 1 to 10. Also, John chapter 20, verse 11 through 18. And John chapter 20, again, 24 through 31. God bless you, brethren. And those who have the feedback forms, if you, Sunday, please try to remember to bring them in as much as, as you can, as life in, in your power. God bless you, brethren. God bless you again, Brother Pat, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Pastor Shirley. Um, it's it's women's service third Sunday. It is women's. It still is, yeah. Okay. God bless it is you. Women's service on. God bless you, brethren. Can we all say the, pro the pronounce the benediction together, please? Yeah. Let the word of our mouth. The of our heart. Our heart. Our heart. Really nice sign. The Lord. Nice sign. Nice sign. Nice oh God, our strength. Mm -hmm. And our redeemer. Good bless you. Good night, everybody. Good night, brother. Good night, brother David. Good lovely to see you, brother John. God bless you, everyone.